how do you share your testimony and help someone to know Jesus? It's like about a year or two ago, I did a survey amongst Christians in our churches. And I, I was shocked at what I found. When I say in our churches, Foursquare, but other churches as well. I, found, I began to realize that many of us don't know how to share Jesus with friends. If that's you, just put your hand up. Be honest. Come on, be honest. There's no shame. You're not in the minority, you're in the majority. How many of you have shared Jesus with a friend, not a Christian friend, over the last six months? Over the last week? I'm just pushing it there. <laughs> see, so, some of the, see, we in church, as a pastor, we expect people to know, but sometimes we don't teach people how. And so this morning, I want to just use your testimony. Use how you came to Jesus. Use your walk with Jesus. Because that's the best, that's the best story that people are going to listen to. The people are not going to listen to your pastor's testimony. They're going to listen to your story. Agreed? Okay, so this morning, do you have your notebooks? You gotta, because you're going to go, you're going to do some work. Are we ready to do some work? Right? Mine is not just preaching to you. You are going to do a lot of the work. You know, here's a, here's a simple principle. If you can share your testimony in one minute, and if, if you have it prepared all the time, you can share it in five minutes, you can share it in ten minutes, you are equipped to help someone be pointed towards Jesus. Most of the time, we don't know what to say because when we have that opportunity, we're like, um, um, I, uh, what should I say? And we get scared. Anyone get scared? Come on, put your hands up, guys. You know, be honest. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, you know, if I ask Krishani, she'll say, yeah, you know, half the time I don't know what to say. <laughs> Pastor Craig and Krishani are totally scared. And see, the more you do it, remember what Pastor Craig says, practice makes permanent. Right? The more you do it. And so this morning, hopefully, I might have a couple of guys coming here and doing a demonstration as well. And, um, but here's the thing. You cannot share your testimony unless you have, exp ex unless you have met Jesus. It's about you caring for someone else. It's about you making that difference. So, let's, uh, let's go, Hannah. Oh, let me start with the story. See, we need to be open and be willing to grab every opportunity that comes. The easiest thing is to walk away. But that, that may be the last time that person may have an opportunity. A couple of weeks ago, about, about two weeks ago, um, I was talking to a friend of mine in Turkey. And uh, we were on FaceTime. And while she, we were talking, she was in her office. There's this guy who passed her. And he was being helped by his wife. And he was limping. And she just turned around and said, hey, you know, meet my friend Sureka. And I'm like, hey, how are you doing? And um, I said, what's wrong with your leg? He said, it's about a month now, I can't walk properly. Something's happened to it. And the doctors are saying that I might have to live with it. And immediately I said, hey, can I pray for you? I'm here in England, he's there in Turkey. My friend is there with him. And uh, he said, yes, please. And so I just told his wife and my friend to just lay hands on him. And we just prayed a small prayer and said, you know, Jesus, please heal his leg. Let your healing begin to come. And, and I said, okay, just let go of your wife and try and walk. And he starts walking. He walks normally. He gets healed. So that's what, you know, that's what it is in a sense to be the difference where you grab hold of an opportunity. 
because there are opportunities all around us if we are willing to listen, if we are willing to look for them. If we are willing to ignore them and walk away, we will not grab those opportunities. About, again, about two weeks ago, Jacob and I were having ice cream. Right, Jacob? You know, I, I, in a, in a uh, ice cream shop in our town. And um, there's this elderly lady who kind of walks in and she's kind of looking and I just felt Jesus saying, buy her what she wants. And um, she's like, how much is, how much is a, a milkshake? And uh, so the lady said 250 or something. And then I, I told the owner, look, give her whatever she needs. I'll, I'll cover it. Now, it's not that I have all the money in the world. Of course I do, because my father owns the world. Come on. Does your father own the world? You're like, yes. <laughs> You've got to be excited. Right? And so then she comes and sits next to us. And she begins to blast Jesus. Uses even certain letters in the alphabet. <laughs> and says that he's a fraud and, you know, you know, he was married and, you know, he brings all and says, you, you, you turn to Google and, you know, everything is there about him. And, and so, like, she, I don't know what, what made her do that. We didn't even talk to her about Jesus. <laughs> but she's like, bang. And I'm like, God, what do I do? And, you know, I couldn't, see, see, I couldn't even get a word in. And, but, you know, we, 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 were, we were loving to her. And then she said she needs to go. And we said, you know, bye, you know. And I'm like, Lord, what was that about? But see, Jesus loves even those who hate him. And he wants us to love them. And we don't know what the effect of that was going to be. But then, here's the miracle. The owner of the shop then comes and sits with us and says, so you're a pastor, you guys are Christians. We say, yeah. And she starts opening her heart about her life. Talk about using a negative experience <laughs> to get to know Jesus. And that's what, see, I'm just, these are just two small stories. Every day, it's, it's not all, always about in church, raising our hands and singing hallelujah, but it's living out Jesus who is in you, in the world that surrounds you. Right? So, let's go. To, so, here's the thing. What's your testimony? Let's start with, you know, what is your testimony? See, if you have come to know Jesus, you should have a testimony. I have a testimony. I came to know Jesus... 33 years ago, <laughs> some Moin's like, wow, I was not even born then. <laughs> I have a testimony, I still remember it, as though it happened yesterday. Each one of us needs to have a testimony. You know, um, your story is the greatest story that people will listen to. Your story. People are not going to listen to my wife, me sharing my wife's story. They're going to, my friends are going to be hearing my story. So each one of you needs to have your story. Your story with Jesus. Right? And here, here's the thing. If you, have not, if you have not invited Jesus into your heart, we want to give an opportunity for you this morning. So that that begins to be your story. A lot of us may ride on our parents' story. But your faith journey has to be your faith journey. Can I have an amen to that? Amen. You know, our kids begin to journey on, our, like as a parent, but then there's a point that you need to discover your journey. You need to discover Jesus for yourself. When my son, when Sean began to discover Jesus for himself on his journey, his life got transformed. His life got transformed. We cannot shadow people. We cannot shadow our parents. We need to discover him for ourselves. Right? So your story is the greatest story. Let's quickly move on. How you, came, how you came to know Jesus. You know, your daily life with and in him. 
your journey, and as I said, not your parents. Say, not my parents' journey. My journey. My journey. And you should be able, to, or, you know, or the question is, can you share your testimony in one minute or five minutes? And I'm going to give you just five principles how to do that. And uh, we're going to have fun. Remember, yesterday I asked you to do a bit of homework. I asked you to pray and ask the Holy Spirit for a name of a friend of yours who does not know Jesus. Did you guys do that? One, one person did that. Can we have 100 points for that, for that team? Oh, oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> Okay, because, because it's important. Here's the thing. We have friends. We have friends who don't know Jesus. You know Jesus. You're on a journey to eternity. They are not. And the only, only way they're going to come to know is through you. It's through your life. It's through your lifestyle. Through what you do. All right, so here, so here are some... Here are some some uh, things. First of all, ask for permission to share your story. Ask for permission. Don't think you have the right to share your story with someone else if they don't want to hear it. So often we think, I have the right to tell them because I know the Lord and I am saved. No, you don't. Did Jesus force himself on people? Even with the Samaritan woman? He was so gentle. He was so loving. He waited for her to say, my life is really down the drain. See, when you listen here, sorry, I, I won't jump. Okay, next. See, don't force. Be gentle. Don't argue. There are people who love to argue. Don't waste your breath. And always say, Holy Spirit, what do I say? Listen to what people say. You will hear their heart. If they're grumbling, you will hear their heart. Beyond what they say. Ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom, for insight. Be willing, be loving, and caring. Don't say, everybody, I need to share, share Jesus with you because I have to do it, my pastor told me. It's like, so what? I don't care. Be, be caring, be loving, because Jesus was loving, right? He was loving towards everyone that he reached out to. We reach out because we love them. Because you love them. And make conversations. A simple hello. Do you know the best way to share God's love? Just give a hug. There are people who are lonely. There are people who are crying out. They may be smiling, but they are crying out because they are lonely. You know, my, my neighbor, my, my fence broke at one point, and my neighbor said, don't put the fence up. He said, don't put the fence up because it will be great for us to just have one common garden. He need not say that. He's not a Christian. He knows I'm a Christian. And at that time, his mother had died. And I was reaching out to him while I was doing my gardening. See, there are moments that God gives you. What are those moments? Make conversations, a simple hello. I think it was Cindy who said, you know, if you, you know, if you want to share about Jesus, don't be the most miserable Christian ever. Okay? Don't, seriously, I have seen Christians who are, I'm like, oh God, if I saw them, I would never, never have wanted to know you. There should be joy in your heart. There should be love in your heart. We get so consumed by our own lifestyles, our own selves, that we don't care about others. But do you know something? Jesus, when he taught us to pray, he never asked us to pray for ourselves. Nowhere in the New Testament did he say, pray for yourself. 
Even in the Lord's Prayer, we've turned it to be a very selfish, self-centered, self-focused prayer. But how did Jesus say to pray? Did he say, my Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me my daily bread and forgive me my trespasses. Or did he say, us, us. This is an us. You and your friend who doesn't know Jesus is an us. Just reach out. Say hi to somebody. Smile at somebody. Is that difficult? How many of you would say to smile is difficult? Just like we heard Simon, Simon or someone who said, every morning smile at yourself and say, hi, how are you? And then go out and say the same thing to someone else. Not, I have, to get, I have to go to school today. <laughs> Come on, you know. See, why is the church not relevant today? Because people see that church is, is, is somewhere back there. They don't see joy in some churches. They only see rules, regulations, all that. I'm not saying just go break rules, no. People need to see. See, I came to know Jesus because I saw Jesus in the person who shared her testimony with me. I saw Jesus in the lady who test my cousin who testified to me. She was in love with him. And I'm like, I know a dead Jesus, you know a Jesus who's alive. So are there two Jesuses? And I said, I want your Jesus. Because I was taught. You don't, you don't smile in church. You don't laugh in church. You don't clap in church. You don't, there's no joy in church. And she's like, wow, I love him. You know, he's with me. I'm like, no, he's not with me. He's with you. That drew me. All right, let's move on. A helping hand. You know, help people. You may not know them. Just help them. How many of you go to the supermarket? Hey, help someone there. How many of you go to coffee shops? You don't go to coffee shops? You don't go to Costas? Starbucks? <laughs> or, you know, here's something. Just help someone. Buy something for someone. Make conversations. Okay, let's move on. Right, five principles. Okay, so you've got to start writing these. The first one is the opener, the connector. So it's like you, you begin to have a conversation. Let's go to show the whole thing. And you know, simple things like, don't say, you know, thus said the Lord, you know, just normal conversation. You know, you can use like, I wasn't always like this, or, you know, I had a life-changing encounter. You don't even need to mention the name Jesus. Would you like to hear it? May I, oh, hold on. May I tell you my story? People want to listen to stories. They don't want to listen to sermons. They want to listen to a story. Okay, so just turn to the person next to you and use one of those phrases. All right, don't get carried away. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> See, how difficult was that? How difficult was that? It's like, you know, you, you meet someone, hey, you know, who's your best mate? Oh, no, who's your mate who's not a Christian? Alex. Okay, so, you know, you're having a chat with Alex. I say, hey, Alex. You know what, you know, I had a, I had a life-changing experience. You know, do you want to hear about it? Because he's your mate, he, you know, he'll say, yeah, just, what happened to you? Man, you, the door just opened for you. May I tell you my story? Ask for permission. Right, step number one. Not step, like principle number one. Oh. 
What were you like? Okay, so this is kind of a little structure I'm giving you. What were you like? What were you like prior to giving your life to Christ or rededicating your life to Jesus? I was not like this before. I was searching for joy and peace. Or you can say, you know, the main thing that caused me to look to Jesus was I was struggling. You know, for me it was like I, I just didn't have peace. My mom had just been diagnosed of cancer and you know, all that. And I was, I was, I was looking for peace. So it's not complicated, it's just being equipped and knowing how to do it. So number one is that, what were you like, okay? So let's begin to build your own story now. Are you with me? Okay, so turn to the next person and just share what brought you to Jesus or, you know, just imagine the person next to you. Okay, all those on the left begin to share with the person on the right. Left. All right, this is left. This is left. <laughs> left to right. All right. Pause. Swap rolls. Now swap. All right, that's enough. See, you guys are telling your whole life story. I'm just, just, just begin the conversation. Okay, so what were you like? Number two, I hope you're writing this down because you will have to build more now. Who or what caused you to know Jesus? Who or and what caused you to know Jesus? Mention the, mention the situation or the person. So for me, it was like, you know, I was looking for peace and joy. And I met my cousin who started to talk to me about the Jesus that she knew. He was so real as she spoke. The more she spoke, the more there was a tugging in my heart. So here's the thing. I'm, I'm, I wanted to build it in a very brief manner because then you can expand it. Who or what? You know, mention the person. Or maybe, you know, some of you came to know Jesus in church. I'd say, you know, I was served, you know, one, one day I was in church and I just felt something drawing me. I knew this was that moment. How many of you got saved in church? So, you know, that's going to be your story. You know, every testimony is not, I, I did drugs and did all that and then came to know Jesus. Some of us grew up in, in Christian homes. Debbie, you've grown up in a Christian home, but you had that moment one day. It's like, what or who? Okay, number three. What prayer did you pray? Simple. The more she spoke, I felt a tugging, yep. I, I invited him as my savior. I, I just said, Lord, you know, Jesus, I'm sorry. I want to know you. And I invited him. I'm, I'm sorry about my, all my mistakes and failures. And I just asked him to forgive me for the things that I had done wrong. Be simple. Be simple. Okay. Let, okay. So as, as you're taking down the point, write your story. Write your little story there. This is part of my story. What prayer did you pray? Because that's important. Because they, you know, at a moment they will, they will pray a prayer. Are we good? Which group is the loudest? I think orange, green. All right, 50 points for everybody. <laughs> right, step number three, four. 
What positive has happened since? Refer to the positive things because, come on, you are trying to encourage someone to know Jesus. Okay? Even if you've been going through hard stuff, it's like, yeah, you know, and my life was really tough. But as soon as he began, I began to know him, my, it was easy for me to face my mountains. It was easy for me to be real about things. I lived in shame, but he began to remove my shame because I began to be real about it. We sometimes like love to say, I came to know Jesus and all my troubles went away. How many of you know that's a lie? Because Jesus said, in this world, you will never have tribulation. You will have tribulation. So much purpose. For me, it was so much purpose. Each day has a new meaning. Each moment. I know that he's there with me. So, how has your life Share that with one another right now. Let's do that same exercise again. Go on, the left to the right first and right to the left. Just in, in, in 20 seconds, in 20 seconds. All right. I'm just, I'm just going because I'm, I'm mindful of the time. So what's the first thing? What's point number one? What were you like? <laughs> number two? That's right. Number three? Number four? What positive has happened? Has anything positive happened after you came to know Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Number five. Seal the deal. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was cash. Include a final statement that leads your listeners to a point of deciding. You may get a no. That's okay. Don't take it personally. Don't take it personally. I remember when we first came to the UK, we were witnessing, and someone just told, point blank told us, we don't need this crap. Our first, first experience was a rejection. Don't let a rejection stop you. Don't let a rejection stop you. There are others. You know, if I would, if, seriously, you know, if I did not, I would be dead today. And I really want you to experience what I'm experiencing. So when you tell that to someone, are they going to say, no man, I just want to be miserable? Would you like me to help you? Would you like me to pray with you? Would you like me, would you like to open your heart to him? To begin to get to know him? Can I pray with you? Can I lead you in a prayer? That's what my friend told me. She said, can I, can I begin, can I pray with you? Would you like to open your heart to Jesus? I said, yes, definitely, I want him. See, remember there's someone working with us. Who is that? The Holy Spirit. You're not alone in this. If you say this is, I, I say this, this would be key because either you drop that seed there for it to germinate or you can just walk away saying nothing. You need to close the deal. You need to seal it, whether they accept or not. I've led, I have led people over the counter at Starbucks because I've shared my testimony in one minute. Here's the thing, you don't suddenly get, do you want to hear my story and blah, 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 blah. No, it's like, hey, what's your name? So, you know, are you a student? You know, what are you doing here? Oh, well, you know, get to know them. 
help them under you know help them understand that you care about them there have been many a time in restaurants that the person serving me has ended up crying not because i've been nasty <laughs> but because they met jesus and it's like hey you know what's your name that's a first, you know have just ask somebody hey what's your name they're not just someone who serves you. Why don't you ask the people who serve you here, hey, what's your name? There's a lady, her name is Maggie. I say, hey, Maggie, thank you for serving me. What do you think you're going to do in Maggie's heart? What do you think? You're dropping a seed in her heart. You're saying, Maggie, I care about you. I care that you serve me. How about the ladies who are cleaning our bedrooms? Why not walk up to there and say, hey, thank you for doing what you did. See, that's how you open the conversation. Okay, I'm not giving any of you money. Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> I hope I have, oh, I have one. Here's something that I did. I printed these out for myself. They're little thank you cards. Right? It says, thank you for who you are and all that you do. And on the other side, let me put my eyes on. It just says thanks. It says, you're simply amazing. The world, you may be, to the world you may be one person, yet it is that one person who makes the world a better place. And, and here's how I bring Jesus in there. I've said, dear Jesus, Please bless my friend. That's it. And so I, I, would, I would give this to someone who serves me. I would give this to those on, a, on the plane. And you know what? They do read it. They may not respond to you, but there's something inside that goes. I've never seen anyone take it and tear it and throw it away. That's your op you know, that is your opening. And you know, they may say, wow, thank you. And then you can say, you know what? My life was not how it is now. I had an amazing experience. Would you like to hear it? Choose that moment. Would you? Sure. Would you? With your friends? Sure. You know, with a str even with a stranger. Right. So, so we've, we have five areas. What are the five areas? What were you like? Number two? Number three? Number four? Number five? Right. Okay. One more. Um, just to, as, as someone says, to make it legal, let's have a scripture in here. <laughs> 1 Peter 3.15. In your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. In your hearts. That way, that is where it begins. Always be prepared. When? When? Always. When? Always. Always. Does that mean that when you are feeling, ah, I just hate people around me? Is it at that moment as well? Yeah, always. always. Very good. To give an answer to, end, to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Are you ready to give an answer to the hope that you have? Are you? And look at the last part. Do this with gentleness and respect. If you don't accept the Lord, you are going to burn in hell. Gentleness and respect. Okay? Right. In the next five minutes, I, I want you to go back to your notes. I want you to build your brief testimony. Would you do that? Would you do that? Yeah. On, these, on, on the points that I gave? Okay, I'm going to give you maybe that's three minutes. Right? Don't write, pep, don't write paragraphs. This is where you are able to share your testimony in how many minutes? One minute. You can expand it at leisure. 
right? So go, start doing that. You can even do it on your phone or on your notebooks. Start writing. If you need help, just put your hand up and I'll help you. There are people who know radicals. You guys, and you know, we're going to do a little role play here as well. Okay. What were you like? Who or what brought you to Jesus? The prayer you prayed? How your life has changed? And seal that deal. Are you discussing? Okay. Let's, let's focus on this now. Daniel, you want to stay? Is it very, very urgent? A couple of minutes more. Remember, don't use religious jargon. Don't start with praise the Lord. <laughs> Remember, they do not know what you are talking about. Don't ask them, have you been saved? They'll ask you, I never drowned. Or they'll tell you, I never drowned. Are we good? Sure. Done? Excellent. Excellent. How many of you finished? Just simple. What are you struggling with? Thinking You're thinking of one. When did you come to know Jesus? Imagine if you guys have this and you start sharing this with many of your friends, what do you think is going to happen? Jacob, you're ready? Where's Sean? Okay, Sean and Jacob, you want to come up? Quickly. Okay, take two mics. So we're just going to do a role play as you are writing. Okay, these guys, I have trained these guys, so if, if they mess up, can we agree like minus 100 points? Yeah? That's what you call pressure. <laughs> nah. All right, so imagine that Sean, oh, you like to lead Sean? Yeah, he's leading me. Okay, they've already planned. Right, so Jekam knows the Lord, and Sean doesn't. Okay, so go ahead. Is he like a friend, or am I meeting him? Yeah, just a friend. I don't care. Just be like, hey man, how are you doing? <laughs> okay, don't say and one. let's time them, right? Let's time them. Go. Work on blood. Louder, louder, because we're going to hear you. How are you doing? How are you doing? Look uh, at you. Life's terrible at the minute, man. I'm depressed. I'm always sad. Nothing's going right for me. Uh, it, 
is same thing. Yes. Go to encounter. May. Check on, we can't hear you. Hello. Use that. Use this. My, my life was messed up as well. And um, may I talk to you about Jesus? Yeah, sure. So one day... All right, day, now that's a fact. <laughs> may I tell you my story? Yeah, may I tell you my story? Sure. Um, so Remember, Jesus is not upset if you say, may I tell you my story? Well, you're going to introduce me to the process. Go ahead. So m my life was messed up. I used to go church, just come back. And I used to just go to church because of my parents was going. And then one day it came that, uh, that I felt like I was missing something in my life. There was this place where I couldn't even, I didn't even know what was missing. And then one day I went to this um, camp called Youth Camp. And there was this opportunity to give my life to Jesus. And the heart was, my heart was telling me, go forward and you will have what you need. And then I went forward. And then something just happened, and it just changed my whole life. Since then? Sorry? Since then? Since then, my life has been... Since, since then, my life has changed. It's not just me and Jesus, my relationship, my lifestyle, my education, and everything just changed. Um, and so do you want to have that change as well? Yeah, I would love to. Okay. Woo! Okay. Nice. You know, that didn't take long, but we can always fine-tune it. It's, how many of you know it's okay to make a mistake? Some of you are like, how many of you know you can make a, it's okay to make a mistake? Yes. Yes. Just only a few. Yes. It's not a shame to make a mistake. Tell the person next to you. It's just a learning process. I'm not perfect. But Jesus is. Right, I want you to now take your phones out. Okay, take your phones out. I know, some, I, I know there are no phone signals, but I want you to begin to draft a message to a friend who doesn't know Jesus. How many of us are here? About 120? In the next five minutes, we are going to witness to 120 people. We are going to witness to 120 people. Do you want to do that? Come on, guys. I, I need some response here. Some of you are scared. Why are you scared? What fears you? Rejection? Are you scared that your friend will reject you? Um, where's... Um, Where's Nirosh and uh, Rav, where's Rav, Ravishan? Ravishan, come on up here quickly. <laughs> Go, Rav. Okay, we did this exercise of texting our friends. And you texted a friend of yours. Yeah. What happened? Um, he said uh, that he was feeling sad and depressed and uh, he was going through something in his life. He didn't tell me what it was because he was like really sensitive. Um, but he said he started crying as well. Um, and he said he was going to come back to church and just pray to God even more. See, when that text, thanks, that text was timely. You will never know the power of your text because the Holy Spirit is going to anoint your text. Okay? So take your phones out right now. You have permission to take your phones out. Put your friend's name on whom you're sending it to. If you have an Apple phone, that's much better. You need, others need to come into the light. <laughs> Kenneth, i.e. Kenneth. He and I have this banter about phones. Okay? You know whom you're sending it to. Don't send it to your pastor. Don't send it to your friend in church. This is someone who doesn't know Jesus. Sorry, I'm missing you guys. 
Right, now start writing. What's the first thing you're going to write? What were you like? Simply, okay? Say, so, you know, just say, hey, how, how, how are you doing? How's life? I'm at, I'm, at a, I'm at a youth conference. I just wanted to say that, you know, I was just thinking about my life and how things have changed for me because I was not the person you know before. And then we can say, what's your name? What's your name? Abigail. So like, Abigail came to know the Lord four years ago because she wanted to have a, a, her own journey, right? So that's what she's going to write. You know, I wanted to have my own journey with Jesus. I wanted to discover him for myself, not my parents' journey. So going to number two then. And then what did you do? Don't say I repented. They don't know what repentance is. And how has your life changed since? That's number four, right? Don't say all my troubles have gone away because it's like he gives us the strength to go through. And the final thing is, I really want you to experience what I experienced with Jesus. Or what I experienced. Would you like me to pray for you? Please do not say, I have seen you living in sin. And I rebuke you because I shall rebuke you for rebuking your friend. <laughs> How are we doing good? Shamindra? How are we doing? <laughs> Once you do it, look at me. This is in a different context, but what, you know, Pastor Craig was teaching you guys on the prophetic. One of his teachers were going, no, no, uh, were going through, a, going through something, right? Or did you know that, or no? No. Just share out, share out very briefly. Uh, so, in middle school, I think, year five or year six, I just sensed that I need to pray for one of my teachers. So, I wrote down, I think, almost a page of what I sensed God hearing. And then I gave it to her, and then she said, I just started crying because it made so much sense to what I was going through. And then it was, it was quite encouraging because I was still quite at a young age there, and I was new to the prophetic as well. And then I think recently, maybe last year, we were at Wagamama's, and we saw her, and she said, I still carry that around with me because it means so much. Can you see what difference you can make? Even in your teachers. Sean had a teacher that was really nasty to him. Any of you have teachers that are nasty to you? <laughs> what do you do? Okay, what do you do? Do you grumble, complain, and curse them? Or do you, do you pray for them? Start praying for them. Be a difference. Be the difference. Start praying for them. What happened, Sean? Sean became his favorite student. Transformation. Start praying for people who hate you. Jesus said to do that. He didn't say gossip. He didn't say talk to one another about it. Okay, how are we on the text? Good? Guys, are you alive? Are we done? Are we done? Okay, hold your phone. We're going to pray now.
Okay? We're going to pray. Irabami, you want to pray? The Lord will use this to touch them. Yeah, um, God, we, we thank you for this moment where every single one of us right now is able to reach out to someone um, where this camp doesn't just become about our own personal experiences and about knowing, knowing you more for us, but it's about how we're reflecting this to other people. Uh, we thank you for this message that we can actually be very intentional with people through simple conversations. Um, and we thank you for reminding us about the people in our lives that don't know you. Um, we thank you for even just the more names that you bring into our minds right now of the people that need you. Uh, we ask that let your spirit bless this um, to to whoever's not sure about sending these kind of texts or having these kind of conversations. We ask for boldness. Um, we ask for courage, and we ask for the messages that are going out to people. Oh God, that let your let your spirit work. It's not just about what we do, oh God. It's about it's about where you're going to take them to. So whether through this message or through something else, oh God, we ask that, let your spirit move in people's lives. Let people find purpose through these messages, oh God. Let people find solution to their problems through these messages, oh God. And let us continue this um, in boldness and courage, oh God, and fight for the lives of the people that we love and care about, oh God. Amen. Wow. Okay, before you send it, Pastor Craig has a testimony. All right, first of all, everybody look up here. I'm going to take a picture. Everybody smile. One, two, three. Woo! So uh, my neighbor just sent me a picture. So my neighbor's name is Michael Parker. Don't really know him well. Uh, I've lived there for a few years. Had a conversation a few years ago. He knew as a pastor. How many of you guys know psychologically sometimes, as soon as people know you're a Christian, you think bad about that relationship they don't necessarily you're just thinking oh he thinks i'm pastor i'm weird so the, about two months ago i saw him in his driveway and he had golf clubs in his hand how many guys know you want to connect to something that you can connect with so i immediately went across the street and said dude do you golf he's like yeah i'm like awesome and we started to talk but i didn't jump into the you need jesus I just started to talk about life and what we do and i started talking about our school and young people and getting real and so he got real, and he was dropping some real stuff, right? And so he said, well, you know what, let's go golf. And I said, great. I said, uh, let's set up a time. He goes, well, I'll let you know my schedule because I do this. I said, well, what do you do? He goes, I do sound. I go, really? He goes, yeah, for Hollywood. He goes, I did the tour for like 20 years before that. So I'm like, what's your name? Michael Parker. I said, all right. So I got his name, phone number. And I said, so what do you, he goes, oh, I, right now I'm, I'm doing sound for American Idol. I'm like, really? I go, who did you do sound for when you travel? Oh, Whitney Houston, Jay-Z. He starts rambling of all these names. I'm like, how many goes, all of our churches need a good sound guy to come in? That's a good witness, by the way. So no joke, we start talking about that. And I went to our worship leader. I said, hey, I met my neighbor, Michael Parker. She looks him up, eight-time Grammy winner. I'm like, this dude's like big time. And I said, hey, Mike, do you want, he goes, yeah, I'll come down. So he came down, and the next week on Thursday night, we do our prayer intercession thing. And uh, our sound guy couldn't make it, so I called him. He goes, wow, crazy timing. I'll be right there. And so this time, he didn't just dial in the worship night. He stayed the whole time, and he was tripping out. He was like watching and leaning in and listening so just know this i'm sending him a picture because he just sent me a picture he just had surgery on his shoulder and so i told him hey dude we're going to pray for you so let's pray for him real quick because he's the one that i'm sending the text to right yeah. so everybody agree with me in prayer real quick come on Father, we speak healing into Michael's shoulder. I pray that he'll blow doctors away, that he'll be back into action in no time, that next time he goes to the doctors, the doctors go, this is impossible. We don't know how your shoulder's 100% healed. We don't know how that happened. And he's going to go, oh, I do. These crazy kids in the UK prayed for me. Come on, lift your voices, guys. 30 seconds. Bless him. Pray for him. Father, we speak healing to that shoulder right now. And we just pray that you will be the witness to Michael and his family in in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, take your phones out and press that button called send. Woo!
Trust Jesus. Don't trust your fear. Trust Jesus. Everyone sent? Yep. If you didn't send, Jesus is watching. <laughs> All right. I would love to hear the responses back. Some may be negative, and that's okay, right? That's okay? Some will be positive. All right.